the time you say it This is what happens in English. To wit, when it has I mean, reached a third of its ripening, and it's damaging in the olive trees when the in Pesach and the wheat in Shavuot in Pentecost. Okay? The, at the same time, these 49 days, we have flowers for the rest of the five trees. We have flowers of uh, olive and grape and fig and pomegranate and dates. The same garden will send him the rain on time and the hot wind on time. And then he will be able to grow the Daganti Rosh Veitzal. You see the difficulty? It's not so simple. This So you can draw the water from the Nile, from the pool, to the kennels here, to the channels here, and you can water the date palms in the garden, the vegetable garden right here, like in Egypt. And the Bible says, you, can, you have it uh, down here, in the, for the land which you are entering to inherit is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come, where at the what, what is it? We're after sowing, sowing your seed. You, you irrigated, irrigated by foot like a vegetable garden. So what is, what is the meaning of irrigated by foot? You can use it with your foot. You can water uh, your garden, but with a foot you can... Sp anyway, we were at the um, botanical garden. Yeah, I'm right on mm -hmm. it. Actually, well, we, we were talking about the uh, David, but we purchased about Ruth, yeah. Yes, sir. Who is it? Ruth. Ruth. And Boaz. You know, it's a nice story, what happened here in the first floor with David. You know, they came from Moab. And Naomi, actually, used to live in Bethlehem before. When they the land. Naomi realized that the only way to get her land back is by using the connection that she had before, but she cannot do it herself. She has to use Ruth to do it. So she sends Ruth to Boaz to help him in the field. And what happens with them, the Bible tells us this love story that happens with them. But it's not only a matter of love. It's a matter of money and, and uh, property. Because Boaz is a relative to Naomi, but there is one relative closer than him that actually he should buy her or maybe uh, uh, own her but Boaz knows probably that this guy is closer than him and actually he cannot buy Ruth what does he do if you open the book of uh, Ruth you can see it. what does he do he goes to the gate yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, right. tell us a story, tell us a story, tell us no, a story. No, he goes to the... Well, we read it, Paul. No, so, so, okay. come on. And it all happened in the expression store. Now, what happens there in the Bible, in the expression store? She told her, go to the expression store. Boaz is working there tonight. Until you get the grains down, you need the wind at night. So he was doing it in the evening. And he was doing it at night. And then she tells her, go, sleep there, and uncover his body. So... He feels a little bit chilly, and then he wakes up, and then he notices me. So she does exactly what her mother-in-law told her, and she takes his blanket off, probably. And then he wakes up, and he suddenly probably smells a woman, or he notices the heat of a woman, and uh, he he notices that somebody is there. He asks, "Who is it?" He says, it's "Me, Ruth." And uh, what happens there, we don't know. But the Bible tries to uh, um, describe what happens there. So probably a love story in the first explore. <coughs> this is why it became like um, <coughs> so famous, the first explore for a love story. But what you see here, you see it round, so the animal can work here uh, with a pressing sledge. Do you see the pressing sledge? This one. Mm -hmm. What is it? See the sledge? The sledge, now it's almost broken. Knife. And uh, sometimes they used to put basalt stones inside instead to cut the crops. They used to bring it here, step on it for a few hours, and then cut it with a threshing sledge for a few hours. And then you can get you get you get some seeds together with all the um, um, a stalk kernel. Oh, no, no, <coughs> chaff. Chaff, exactly. But you have to separate it. 
So you have to do more things. The next thing you do, you take the winnowing fork and all the light stuff goes away. You have some dirt and some of the seeds and then you have to filter it with, uh, with this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, standing like this <laughs> and all the dirt goes down. You know, you're left with the seeds here. You take the seeds, these are two uh, different um, graining stones or grinding so if you put the seeds here you take it to here you put the stone here and you just spin it around or you do it with a donkey mm. you can do the same thing here this is later on it's a, it's a technology it's high-tech for this <laughs> okay it's later on mm -hmm. it's a technology that was invented later on they used to, to use animals to spin it around you can get some grain coming down to here okay and then you can store it you can store it before you make flour in these two holes it used to be big, it used to be small, doesn't matter. But this is what we used to do. The, the, our literature says 11 different things, types of work you could have done until you get bre uh, bread. You have to plow, you have to put seeds, you have to harvest, bring it here, cut it and spin it and, and winnowing and uh, everything, 11 different, and then you cook it and bake it and whatever, mix it with water and salt and bake it and you make bread. Today you go to the supermarket, you buy a piece of bread. 11 different works they used to do to make bread. That's the fields of our wheat and barley. There's another threshing floor down there. That's another one, this hut. Another threshing floor. You can see again the almond trees. Look how beautiful it is. The white flowers. The hill of menorah with the olive press. Again, another olive press down there, mm -hmm. up there. Okay? Now you said this was squeezing. Okay? So that's for crushing. You use it with a heavy stone to crush the seeds because you have some uh, oil in the seeds mm -hmm. and you want to take uh, the oil out from there so you crush it with a heavy stone and then you have crushed olives you put it in baskets and you put it down here let's go and see here you, to you put it here you see the baskets here yeah. you put the crushed olives here all the way up and then you press it down with this wooden beam okay so that's for squeezing you have the, uh, the stones there as well. Wait, just say it again. Tell it again. You, fill, you fill this all down. No, you fill you fill this these two stones with olives. You crush it by the spinning the stone. Right, okay. And then you get only crushed olives, you don't get olive oil yet. Right. You take all the crushed olives, you put it in the basket, uh -huh. and you oh, put the right, basket right, right. down that's, here. That's okay. the um, that's the secondary one. Exactly. This is right. the pure version. No, this and is the crushing, version. and this is the squeezing. This is the squeezing. The you put the baskets okay. underneath, and then you squeeze it with a oh. with a tree, with a right. with a so branch. Then, and then you take what's left, and then, then you, you do take it again. the oil from there. No, you, do you see this basin with the water? Once. <laughs> Um, 
Wait. You can actually see that I was here. Amazing. I don't know if I own it yet, but I think people that talking about it a little bit. Yeah. Nobody wants to stop conversation. We didn't have that kind of stuff. I don't know how to tell you. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully tomorrow we'll look at the resolution. Um, but I want to preface my remarks by saying the following. <clears throat> There's two tendencies when we study this particular incident. Most people have one of two reactions. Um, and I won't generalize, but I will generalize. <laughs> um, people who tend to be more to the right um, often associated with more observance um, or a greater commitment to the Torah and the text, often make the attempt to recast David's act in a positive light. But somehow we're misunderstanding all this, we're not reading it right, and really David, like all the other biblical characters that appear to have human flaws, is not really human at all. He's almost, well, I wouldn't say divine, but almost, you know, angelic. That the biblical characters are so far above anything that we could possibly imagine that what is presented in here as a transgression or a flaw is really not. And then we have to go about reinterpreting what really took place. Okay, that's one tendency. The other tendency, also as extreme, is to look at David and say, David is obviously an evil character, and all the other characters in Tanakh who have flaws are also evil characters, and therefore I have nothing meaningful that I can learn from them. There's a tendency to dismiss David, right? If I read this chapter about David's life, and this is what he did, then there's nothing that this man can tell me about how I should live my life. Those are the two tendencies. They're both extreme. Okay, friends. This is the way we started. So, once again, we leave Yimba, Laram. Here we are. Not as quite as awake as we were on the first day. But nonetheless, sad to leave Jerusalem, but trying to hide them.
I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. If anybody, anybody knows the prayer in Hebrew? Um, in Ishkah, Exactly. What is it? Oh, Ishka Ishka I can't go farther than that. Ishkah, Jerusalem. Ishkah, Jemini. Ishkah, Jemini. Ishkah, Jemini. Ishkah, Jemini. Where's that from again? And that's from Psalm, Psalm 137. Thank you. And we usually recite this psalm when we leave Jerusalem after a few days <laughs> of touring the city. And uh, we end with the Shana Ba'ah, the Yerushalayim. Okay. Amen. Ladies, it's more than an honor, a pleasure, and a lot of fun to take you around. Believe me, there are times that you take a group of Sphinx around and, uh, <laughs> and it's not exactly a pleasure, okay? You got on the bus on the first day, you look around and say, oh my God, what a line of job I've chosen. <laughs> and you just go sick. It happens. <laughs> Find a substitute. But, uh, but um, it's uh, really a lot of fun and joy to uh, be with you. You are uh, really... Uh, wonderful spirits and wonderful people and uh, i'm no doubt gonna miss you all okay when you get back home and i hope i hope i'll have the chance to uh see you all again okay all in all as one or one by one 
at least I had over here the, uh, I would say, the pleasure of having a, a dear lady that uh, we had uh, quite a good time together a few years ago. And uh, it seems that we haven't forgotten each other, okay? And that's when uh, true love goes through, folks. I'm sorry. Are you listening to this tale? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm happy that you have those earphones on and you're listening to the uh, to the uh, tape or whatever. That... <laughs> but, um, ladies, really, thanks for coming. Because you really had all the reasons to uh, uh, postpone your trip, to, uh, I'll say, uh, just... Uh, I uh, say, well, uh, sorry, we're not coming. I know that some of you have some hard times for the family, saying, don't you have where else to go now at this time? And as Marcus says, always, there's always a reason not to come to Israel. Because always, we'll always have some problems in the area. But uh, as we came all the way and tried to convince you folks that uh, leave us, it's okay, it's safe. And uh, for those of me here, uh, bypassing Jericho, okay, okay, right? So you're okay with that, right? Okay. And on uh, all the way, and now all the way along the uh, what is known as the Bika, the Jordan Valley, okay, parallel to the uh, Jordan River, and uh, eventually we're going to reach Beit Sheath. Folks, Beit Sheath, the Sana Peninsula. Referring to the way our end, you won't get it then. And they're not using that option, usually. The only reason they would use an option is all the way straight ahead, Mount Nebo. Folks, ladies, Mount Nebo, where Moses saw for the first and last time the Promised Land. Jericho, over there on your left-hand side, and that tall building is that famous casino, okay, that they have over there. The last time, the Promised Land. Look at, folks, what we have turned this desert into. All those fields on your left and right belong. These are bricks, right? Either two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, King Abdallah, that was the grandfather of King Hussein, that is the, uh, I would say, father of King Abdallah today. Let's go with that. Today, 35% of the population of uh, Jordan are Bedouins. For those who are going to Petra, okay? Folks, there's the Moab Mountains over there, just behind me. And crossing it, following, following the Ark, the 12 tribes, this is the vast area that you're looking at now. Look carefully. It is, and there's no doubt about it. There's a beautiful description, though. And instead of the Jordan River, stop flowing. And from that moment, at that point, and all the way down to the Dead Sea, the, the, the uh, Jordan River has dried out. Exactly. Marim, Tamar, where over there on top, this is a water, a water uh, container. those are Jewish cows, those are not all saints, those are the gold saints, but to be quite honest folks, in Israel the cows, let's say back in the States, the cows are treated how many times a day? Twice. Two. In Israel, eat about her condition, about her health, about the amount of milk that she can give, and then the only thing they do is just hook those uh, pumps, okay, and that's it. She goes. Exactly. And you know what? I always remember this area for a few
from a lady on the Kiva Deli checks, you know, the luau that posts where everybody is going and where the rides are. And he calls her and he says, you know, can you give us a ride? My mom needs to go swim. And she said, sure, I can take you part way up. And then we walk the rest of the way. And then yesterday she sees us in the dining room and she says, by the way, how was the pool? And we said, oh, it was just wonderful. And so she said, well, I have a 16-year-old son with CP. And there's nobody who can go into the water with him. I think one of the exciting things about Yahoo is all of the industry that they've become involved with. They now have a huge site factory that brings in millions of shekels a year to the kibbutz. They grow parsley, they grow oregano, they grow paprika. Um, you know, it's all on the sides of the of the road. And I guess Ellie has been working there for a while. But you know, when it's rainy, they can't harvest the the earth, and so then they get onto the um, has been working with them like date fields, and they do a lot of um, organic farming. That's the 90s, who has developed, you know, some kind of a strain of bees that are pollinating the plants, and they they grow the bees, and they, you know, sell them to the different people seeing them. Um,